being a professional player, sometimes you think that you're above the law. You got to have someone to, to tell you no sometimes. And it's hard because, you know, who's going to tell you no? You got to have that person that's going to see through all the stardom and, and the money and, and the fame and say, hey, you got to stop. I would have had that if someone would have known about it. I had those people around me, but I hid it so well. I am on the way to see my buddy. This will be a special meeting for me. It's the lightning. Just getting out of the house, I can't imagine being stuck in the house. But it's better than the other option, being stuck in a jail cell. You know, I wish I would have known just to help him. I mean, that's what, that's what friendship is all about. Need to make sure Jimmy is doing good. Keenan McCardell. Keenan McCardell. What's up, man? Stone. What How up, boy? Doing? Good. Good to right? see you, boy. Huh? You ain't gained no weight, man. You ain't either. What <laughs> you been <laughs> doing? Man, you ain't gained no weight. That's what all I've been doing is eating, man. You been on mama, Come mama, on mama gonna treat you. Your mama's going to feed me. She's going to treat you. Right. Yeah. Hi. It's been 13 years since Keenan McCardell and Jimmy Smith played together. This is the best route runner I've ever seen in my life. It's got to be oh, Jimmy. Man, whatever, whatever. Because nobody can catch him. They were once the most dynamic receiving combination in football. On this day, one is a football coach, and the other is a convicted felon on house arrest. You sure you want to go run some six routes? We gonna run some X-rays? Shoot, I probably got a couple in me. You know, mentally, I think I can do it. Mentally, I think I can do it too. For the six years they played together, Smith and McCardell combined for more than 14,000 yards and over 1,000 receptions, more than any receiving tandem in the NFL during that time. From 97, 98, 99, even all through 2000, the best tandem in the NFL. Cardell steps up, turns and fires. He's got Jimmy Smith. Smith makes the grab on the run down the sideline. Lunges. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Jimmy Smith was a great wide receiver. He wasn't good. He was great. We used to pray for people, come on, get up on Jimmy, Pat, press Jimmy, because as soon as you got up on him, he was going right by you. Looking for Jimmy Smith, who's beating the coverage, he makes the grab, touchdown! Keenan McCardell's got it! Keenan was smart, studied, was tough as nails. He practiced with him, separated his shoulder. He didn't wait till Sunday to play. He's one of the toughest players I've ever had the privilege of coach. They were inseparable. Uh, they were just about like brothers. I always thought of us as a tandem because we needed each other. We see footage of people talking about duos and they don't talk about us. Despite their success, being in a small market made it difficult for Smith and McCardell to gain national recognition. Jimmy and Keenan came out of nowhere to become that great pass catching combination. They never got the due they deserved. Welcome to Jacksonville. Jungle, baby. The guys weren't going to Pro Bowls either because they weren't getting the votes. This market's been that way for a long time. People just pushed it to the side, and those guys got hurt by it in a big way. People didn't know who they were. Christian tackle. There he goes. That's Jimmy. Five. Touchdown. You can't run with you. You cannot run with you. 
No, nah, I'm telling the way. They can't cover us, man. That's all right. We, we gonna get open, though. We gonna get open, all right? Those two guys put Jacksonville uh, on the map. And I don't think they've had anybody close to that or probably will ever have anyone close to those two wide receivers. I guess that's what makes us a great team. Thank you, dog. Thank you. me to give you that $100 one day. <laughs> Coming up, on the field, Smith and McCardell were inseparable. Off the field, they couldn't have been further apart. This ain't the way to live. Oh, screw this. I'm, I'm too good in this world, you know what I'm saying, for this. Before Keenan McCardell and Jimmy Smith were household names in Jacksonville, they spent the first few years of their careers trying to make names for themselves. We had been in situations where we were on the outside looking in, so every time we stepped in practice, in between on we white knew lines, important, we knew the importance. We knew the of importance it. of practicing hard and showing folks that we belong because we didn't want to be on the outside looking in anymore. McCardell knew the role of the underdog well. 325 players were taken ahead of him before the Redskins selected him in the 12th round of the 1991 draft. We drafted Keenan as uh, a guy that filled a practice squad role and, and could have been on the field if it wasn't for the posse of Gary Clark, uh, Art Monk, and Ricky Sanders. And that is probably the last play of Super Bowl 26. The Redskins are the world champions. Smith's career began with the Redskins' greatest rival, but despite being the 36th pick in the 1992 draft, he too found himself buried on the depth chart. The phone rang, and it was Jerry Jones. And I can just remember hearing that voice. He's like, is this Jimmy? This is Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to pick you second. And, you know, my heart just dropped. His nickname was Silk uh, for us because he was so smooth. With talent like number 88, the playmaker, Silk spent more time on the sidelines than on the field. I could have caught every ball in camp, and he could have dropped every ball in camp. There's no way that I was going to play in front of Michael Irvin. But there was a lot that I learned from him. Just watch me. You know what my rookie year, when I was drafted by the Cowboys? I did everything Mike did. Everything Michael Irvin did, I did. My rookie season, I caught zero passes. My highlight of my rookie year was tackling Deion Sanders in Atlanta on Monday Night Football. That's another 48-yard boot and a six-yard run back. Deion to the 11-yard line where he's tackled by Jimmy Smith. He just had a hard time getting on the field. You know, just didn't get a lot of work with him, period. Injury and illness didn't make things any easier for Smith. In his first year, he missed eight weeks with a broken leg. In the following season, he missed the entire year after an emergency appendectomy caused a life-threatening infection. At that time, you thought, well, this is just a guy that, that didn't work out. This was the wrong place for him to be at the wrong time. Dallas cut Smith prior to the 1994 season, but not before he got swept away by the success of a Cowboys team that had won two Super Bowls in the two years he was there. Your Cowboys are the champions. It's fun to be a cowboy when times are good and you've got the world handed to you, then uh, sometimes it's difficult, I think, to make responsible decisions. There's a lot of drugs around there. There's a lot of drugs and it ended a lot of guys' careers, too. I would indulge in it because I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe this is the real, this is the NFL. You know, you really develop an addiction, you know, when you're in that environment. In 1994, he was picked up by the Eagles and then released before the regular season even began. The receiver had gone his first three years in the NFL without a single catch. It's my pleasure to announce that the uh, membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. It was really an exciting time for the city of Jacksonville. I thought, fine, I'll get to work on this team right away. And I knew that it was going to be a very motley group of young men. As stupid as it sounds, I didn't think that, you know, they were real NFL teams. I wanted to go to an established team, like the Cowboys and the Eagles. And, you know, my dad was like, son, are you stupid? He slapped me across the head. Look, son, you got to go get a job. You don't have a job right now. I decided I know what I'll do. I've got to do something to get that coach's attention. 
my mom, without my permission, made this binder, and it had all my clippings in it. And I say, give this to your coach. And he kind of looked at me. Well, when you're 20-some years old, you know, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't really feel like walking into a team meeting room with a binder. And then she had across the binder in bold letters, like two-inch letters, all I need is a chance. And everybody could see it. It's embarrassing. But I really didn't keep my promise because I didn't actually give it to Coach Coughlin. I gave it to Pete Carmichael. Thank God. Because Coach Carmichael used to say, you know, I remember when, when, when your mom gave me the book on you. And I was like, <laughs> what book? You know, because he wouldn't say nothing. He was like, man, I'm not telling y'all what, what, what all went down. Then Coach, Coach Carmichael told us. I was just kind of like, man, that's pretty cool. Coming up. I'll be honest with you, in 95, I, early, I didn't even know who Jimmy Smith was. This team does not have a big threat wide receiver. It was a hodgepodge of guys coming from all over the league. It didn't feel special. It felt like an expansion team. Start of the 96 season, Jimmy was just a guy. I don't recall us going into that season thinking, Man, we got to get the ball to smooth. And we needed skill guys. It's like we were we were dominant scoring the ball in 95. And then they say we got wide receiver Keenan McCardell. And I'm like, who's Keenan McCardell? I mean, who's this guy? Keenan McCardell was cut three times by the Cleveland Browns before becoming a regular in his fourth season with the team. Keenan played well against us. I just liked his background. You know, the guy was drafted in the 12th round. Nothing ever came easy. He worked his tail off. You know, he made the play. The Jaguars also signed four-time pro bowler Andre Risen, an outspoken wideout who was nicknamed Bad Moon. What were the expectations going into that 96 season? If they won five games, they'd be happy. In their second year of existence, the Jaguars lost six of their first nine games. They have no timeout. Clock is running. Mark Brunel cannot get it off. And the game is over. It's over. It's over. You can't get the snap off. The Rams have won it. It was ugly. And even in the locker room, you know, there were guys getting really tired of it. But he wasn't happy with his role in the offense. He expressed a little dissatisfaction. Andre and I never got on the same page. We weren't connecting. Andre Risen is probably one of the hardest receivers to coach because you don't know what he's going to do, and his own quarterback doesn't know what he's going to do. He was supposed to run up or uh, out. Uh, out, and he, he, ran ran a, post. he ran a post. The route was there. He threw it where Ryzen was supposed to be. Ryzen was not there. It puts us at four and seven, and that Monday they cut Andre Ryzen. Andre was out of the picture. Those passes were, were going to start going to Jimmy. I don't know if that's why they cut him. If it is, they're geniuses, because it got the best receiver ever in the history of this franchise on the field. Drop now, Brunel looking long into the end zone. Jimmy Smith racing down. Smith makes the catch. I remember Keenan coming to me, just like, look, man, we're going to be able to do this thing. And it's going to be a one-two punch. You know, it's going to be me and you, and we're going to have to carry the load. I'm going to be here all day. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to push him, because he's trying to sit on the cover. Yeah, he I'm just going to push him real deep. I felt like myself, Jimmy, and Keenan, we were dialed in. After inserting Smith into the starting lineup, the Jaguars won their last five games and made the playoffs. We're not going to be as happy to be in here now. We're in this thing to win. We were the afterthought. I mean, number one, we were a second-year expansion team. And we're going up to Buffalo. Welcome to NFL playoff football. The Bills take on the upstart Jacksonville Jaguars. The Bills have won nine straight playoff games on this field, and they're favored to do it again today. These young guys, quick as they got in, as quick as they got to get their ass out. Buffalo scored two first quarter touchdowns, but Jacksonville fought back. It didn't matter who lined up against us. But who was going to go to work? We were going to work. Brunel under pressure. Throws on the run, complete to McCardell. 
trailing by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Jaguars turned to their two wide receivers to lead them to victory. Jimmy Smith will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh, great patience by Jimmy Smith. And all of a sudden, it changed. Like, we're going to win this game. in Denver. Oh, it was even less than a chance. I mean, that was the team going to the Super Bowl. They were the best team in the AFC all year long. Here in Denver, the Broncos have played a season with a Super Bowl design. A Pro Bowl cast of Broncos tough enough to help Denver do a perfect 8-0 home mark. And they're led by a football Goliath, a legend at quarterback. The role of two-touchdown underdog played by Jacksonville. The thing that really clicked was the day we got to Denver. We were sitting with a couple of other offensive linemen. Someone breaks out at the Denver Post. Call us the Jaguars. He called us the Jaguars. Jaguars. To us, it was like one more individual disrespecting us, unless we had no chance. Not a cloud in the sky. It's a good day for Jaguar weather. Once again, the Jaguars gave up two first quarter touchdowns. And once again, they clawed back. It was just one of those things that if I'm the leader, let me get it started. We need this. And that was just the play I had to make. I mean, it's just like I was programmed to make that play. Cornell walks it downfield looking for Keenan in the end zone. Keenan leaps, makes the catch. Touchdown, Jaguars! The play was never over. That was the beauty of, of Keenan. Yeah, I remember seeing this. From my view, being on the other side of the field, that was, it was pretty. The part of this game that I really remember was when we had to put it away. This is the biggest defensive play for the Denver Broncos in this entire football game. Third and a huge five. I can remember in the huddle, and we had 62 X Reed, which primarily was a throw to, to Keenan. Uh, but I remember the huddle saying, Jimmy, if you get pressed, I'm coming to you. And I thought, they're not going to press Jimmy. Sure enough, I'm kind of looking and looking at the front, kind of look over, and I thought, wow. They're pressing Jimmy. Well, it, it, it's a no-brainer. Jimmy Smith, two years ago, sitting at home, nobody wanted him. And here he is two years later, caught over 80 balls and just makes that incredible catch. Bus wasn't no shock that we made these plays. And we had so much confidence in each other that we were not gonna let each other down. The Jaguars are going to the championship game of the American Football Conference. The two misfit receivers who had each been cut by two different teams, were now one game away from playing in the Super Bowl together. That dream would be put on hold when they lost to New England. They, they won, and we felt the next year we had to be better. Coming up. What does an addict look like? You can't line them up categorically. You can't say that guy is and that guy isn't. You know, when you've been an addict, you don't really want to let people know because you know they're going to tell you no. How many balls your daddy catch? Uh, three? No, I caught seven balls a day. Oh. Don't short change me, man. Okay. Right. I went to all the home games. I mean, I got to go on the field. Went to practices, training camp. It was a pretty fun time for me. I really wish I could go back and uh, relive it. Hey, are these guys going to come out and watch practice? My, my boys? Yeah, they will. I know he will. He'll be out there every day. 
you want to do the same thing he's doing. I mean, going to the Pro Bowl and being like one of the superstars was pretty big. I mean, everybody was around lo looking at Thunder and Lightning. Keenan McCardell and Jimmy Smith had taken Jacksonville by storm, and they had the nickname to prove it. We had a photo shoot for TV Guide, and as they were doing the photo shoot, you can see the clouds rolling in, and it started thundering, and then it started lighting hard. The guy, TV Guide, that was, that was doing the photo shoot was like, thunder and lightning. And it was like, who's gonna be the thunder and who's, who's gonna, gonna be, be the lightning? lightning? Well, since I'm fast, I'll be the lightning. And Keenan, he brings the thunder, he's gonna be the thunder. Thunder and lightning typically go together, but on the field, other than playing, both playing receivers, they were completely opposite. Jimmy was a perimeter guy. He was, he was our ex. We didn't put him anywhere else. And one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you couldn't cover Jimmy. That's all she wrote. You're not gonna catch a guy with that kind of speed. Kenny was more of a slot receiver. We brought him on the inside, and he was masterful. I mean, he just had a feel. These two in combination were just uh, awesome. There were years 116 and 78, 106 and 93. These are the kind of production years that they had. In 1999, Smith and McCardell caught lightning in a bottle and made the Jacksonville Jaguars the best team in the NFL and an overwhelming favorite to reach the Super Bowl. 99 team was one of the best teams I've been on on both sides of the ball. I remember they had a song that, uh, a video that they did, the Jaguars, something, something called Uh-Oh, I, I don't. Uh-Oh, Uh-Oh, that's, it has something like that. They were all in it, they all sang in it. We were 14 and two. Our two losses were to the same team. Brunel drops, throws a fade pattern, intercepted. McNair to throw, looking for the end zone, dumps it over the middle. He's got Dyson at the five. Dyson lunging for the end zone, touchdown. And that season right there, I think it was all about pressing to beat the Titans. A week after beating the Dolphins in the playoffs, they found themselves facing the Titans once again. We are on the precipice of the Super Bowl here this afternoon. One of these two teams will actually step over and into a chance for the Lombardi Trophy. We were confident. We were on a high. They were coming to our house. I can feel it coming in the air, baby. What we've been dreaming about all my life. Championship. Chance to go to the big dance, baby. Brunel rolls left, throws to the tight end ball. Intercepted. Brunel drops. He's in trouble. He's sacked. Safety. Uh oh. <laughs> Who that's gonna go beat them tight? Who that? Boy, is this gonna be a painful end of the season. And for Tom Coughlin and this football team, the road to the Super Bowl stops in Jacksonville this year. Something about it was them. something about playing them that we just, you know. Couldn't get over I don't home. know what it was. You know, had that not happened, oh, we would have been in the Super Bowl playing the Rams. Imagine if they, they had, it would have been Bruce and Holt in the Super Bowl against Jimmy and Keenan. That's when they would have got their due in, the, in that Super Bowl. But they, you know, they never got there. And then it just, it just frayed. The Jaguars tried to put the pieces back together. But in 2001, their star receiver underwent abdominal surgery. I spent that whole off season in the hospital. Man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy to go through that. Well, nobody really knew how serious that was. I mean, Jimmy could have died more than one time. Three times they opened him up from the top of his, right at his sternum, down below his belly button. I'm there because I didn't want him to be there alone. I wanted him to know our relationship was much more than just coach-player. But for Smith, his hospital stay was just the beginning 
of his troubles. He was charged with DUI, and police say his blood was positive for cocaine. All day long today, how much have you had to drink alcoholic beverage-wise up to now? One beer. I was shocked. I had never had an occasion to question him, and he had never indicated to me anything but straight, truthful answers. And so myself and the legal team believed him. We believed him. I asked him directly, uh, did he use cocaine? He looked me right in the eye and said, I do not use cocaine nor any other form of drugs. He and his representatives are investigating further to see why his test would be positive. He didn't want to admit that this was an issue, and he would do anything in his power to make sure those that were closest to him understood him. Jimmy pulled me aside. He, put, he took me into the quarterback room, and uh, he said, listen, and he looked me in the eye, and he said, you know me. You know me. I would never touch that stuff. I didn't do it. Um, I don't know what they're saying. I don't know where it's coming from, but I didn't do it. I'll comment about Jimmy Smith. I've known Jimmy for seven years, and uh, Jimmy told me that he did not take that, and I believe him, and that's where I stand. If he, if he says he did not do it, he did not do it. You know, when you have an addiction, the first thing that you do is lie. I've never done it, don't do it, and I don't plan to do it. Uh, it's just, I just hate for my name to be associated with anything like that. You just lie for no reason. You got to have someone to, to tell you no sometimes. I would have had that if, if, if someone would have known about it. I had those people around me, but I hid it so well. A couple people asked me, even Prisco asked me, he said, you didn't know Jimmy was doing what he was doing? I say, no. I say, because Jimmy respected me that much and never would do anything in front of me. And he probably knew I'd be like, man, what the heck are you doing? When you have a family member and situations go on in their lives, and you, you, you trust what they say. You have to. I never doubted any of his decisions. Because he had no, he, he never gave me any, any, anything to say that I shouldn't trust. Smith had lost himself. The following year, he would lose the chance to play with his best friend. The reason for our decline is we got in cap trouble. We couldn't keep the players that we had. I was very upset because I felt like, you know, I came off. 94 catches that year and like 1,200 yards, and I'm like, I'm getting cut. It wasn't that Keenan was gone as much it was Keenan and Jimmy weren't together. It affected us because it affected Jimmy. I was upset that, you know, I, I need my dog you know, <laughs> by my side. This thunder and lightning, you can't break that up. Going into the 2 season, we had lots of needs. Gruden came in, that was his first year, and he addressed every position. Damn it, Marquise! On a basic! One of those spots was the receiver spots. He said, the guy we need is Kenny McCardell. Coach Gruden called me. It's like, hey, I understand the situation in Jacksonville. Tom talks highly about you. You come here, we win championship. And I was sold. Goes a closing back. He had a great passion for the game. He loved to smile, he loved to win, <laughs> and he loved to work. Keenan McCardell's work helped the Buccaneers reach the Super Bowl in 2002. Going behind receiver, call. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Keenan McCardell! I was thrilled for him. Keenan's one of those guys that you, you, you root for. Him even more. Hey, Keenan! That's what I 
awesome, man. Love you, man. It's a lot of hard work you just did, man. Oh, yeah. You scored twice today? Yeah. How about that, man? I, Congratulations, man. I don't know what to say right now. I'm still I'm just numb. I mean, I wish you would have got the same satisfaction that we got at winning the Super Bowl together mm -hmm. because it would have been it, it was sweet. What's a lot of hard work that went in to get the Super Bowl ready? Obviously, everyone knew he could still play. But they made a decision to go in a different direction, and things would have been different if he stayed. The following year, the Jaguars went in a new direction by firing Tom Coughlin and hiring Jack Del Rio. Uh, nice play, Ho. Before Jimmy Smith could play a game for Del Rio, he failed a drug test and was suspended. It caught me by surprise. It hurt. That was the first time I had ever kind of felt that there was something going on. I never felt betrayed. I was disappointed. Because even at that time, I realized he was in a bad place. I think somehow, some way, I knew he had lied to me. And yeah, I was hurt. Darn right, I was hurt. That wasn't the deal. This was a young man who, when he came to us, he was a shell of what he developed into. And I took great pride in that. And I wanted him to be a standard bearer. I wanted him to be a great example to the youth of America. So I was I was greatly disappointed. At first, I was like, oh, I don't want anybody to know. But then, you know, after 10 years of using, you'd be like, man, who cares? I was just going to go out and catch a touchdown, and then people were going to forget about it. Smith returned from his suspension, and in week nine, Thunder, again, made history with lightning. For six years, his teammates in Jacksonville, Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell, caught more passes over that span than any duo in NFL history. Now on different teams, each is closing in on a milestone, 700 catches in a career. And Mike, the two receivers remain best friends. Keenan, what special bond do you two have? Just to know that me and him have been down the same road and me and him want to fight, fight to the very end to stay in this league and, and be the best that we can be. Stop the game for Jimmy Smith. He reaches 700 for his career. Oh, no. He catching balls, too? I got to catch balls. Johnson trying to pick up the first down. It does to McCardell, who has 700 catches for his career. When McCardell retired in 2007, he had 883 catches and ranked ninth on the all time list. Jimmy Smith abruptly retired before the start of the 2006 season. Perhaps the most underrated receiver of the last decade and a half, Jimmy Smith. He leaves the game seventh on the all-time list in terms of career receptions, 11th on the all-time list in terms of career receiving yards. People were saying that he retired because he failed another test. And he came over to me, he says, Pete, you know me. You know, I, I said, no, Jimmy, I don't know you. I don't know how, what happened. I hope that's not the case, because you're a great player. You should still be playing, but so nobody ever knows. I think he, he, he ran into trouble again, and before him having to be suspended, I think he decided to retire. That's what I think, and it's not based on fact. I really don't know. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is that they thought I retired because I failed a drug test. I had one year left on my contract, and I was tired. I was actually tired the year before. I was just like, what else do I have to play for? So, Jimmy, I want to thank you for uh, all the things that you've meant to this organization over the last 11 years. Jimmy will forever be remembered by our Jaguar fans as one of our early heroes. Following another big story this morning, one of the biggest names in Jacksonville Jaguar history is in trouble with the law again this morning. This time, Jimmy Smith is facing drug charges, and right now he's in jail. I used to look around and be like, how can anybody walk around and not get high? You know, I thought it was actually something wrong with sober people. I didn't think anything was wrong with me. Troopers searched his car. He reportedly found six grams of crack cocaine and three grams of marijuana. No, oh, it just... It broke my heart. I mean, it just killed you. He was throwing away the legacy he had in this community and on this franchise. This isn't Jimmy Smith's first run in with the law. Last August, police arrested him for DUI and drug possession. It was painful. You don't raise your children to have this happen to them. And one time his mother did approach me and call me and ask me, I was in New York, if I would you know, talk to him, and I tried. I, I left a message, but it, I mean, I could never get him. He would never, he didn't return the call. 
I would do the same. I mean, she's fighting for her son. We all were at one time fighting for her son. Yeah, all I got is my name. I'm not a drug dealer. I'm not gonna make no money in drugs. So turn my life around. He started staying out late at night, and I mean, I barely saw him half the time when, when he started changing. He was just a complete, total different person. It just hurts me that I couldn't figure it out. Like I always say, I want to figure out the problem to help. McCardell helped Smith by putting him in touch with John Lucas, a former NBA star who counseled addicts. It wasn't the only way McCardell tried to help. I was scared. I said, man, it's time for you to leave Jacksonville. Remember when I told you that? Yep. But it was just so many things that was going on in Jacksonville that were bad things. He needed to step away from that. Let's get away from them problems and start a new life. Smith listened to his friend and left Jacksonville for Mississippi. I thought that, well, since I've gone to rehab, how about I reward myself? I was driving without a driver's license. I said, hey, I'm just going to have some marijuana. I just happened to be driving my dad's truck. You know, I just happened to have my 12-year-old son's uh, starter deer rifle in the truck. I don't know, out of all the nights, I get pulled over. So they handcuffed me and take me to jail. He wore a uniform of teal and black. Now former Jaguars wide receiver Jimmy Smith is wearing a much different uniform, prison garb. Smith recently started serving a six-year term in Mississippi for drug and weapons violations. Didn't have to be. That's all I, that's all I feel. It didn't have to be. I didn't really think jail was a reality until I set foot in one. They locked those doors on me. I'm beginning to think that, you know, it's something that I'm not doing right. Jimmy Smith's sentence was reduced from six years in prison to two years on house arrest. And I was like, all right, this is the point where he has to say, I'm done with this. You could tell very early on that when Keenan McCardo gets done playing, he was going to coach. He was going to be a part of football. The first person to give Keenan McCardell a coaching job was Tom Coughlin, who hired him as a coaching intern with the Giants in 2009. When I was looking for a receiver coach and I had Keenan's name on my short list, you know, I called Tom. You know, Tom's a mentor of mine and somebody who I respect tremendously. He just told me, he said, Randy, he was, he was great. He did a great job. I think he'd be great for you. You know, those were the things all I needed to hear just to confirm what I felt in my own heart. Work on good stance today. Good job. People like Go. Keenan in this business today are needed. Go. You can tell them the work that has to go into succeeding. Players can relate to somebody like Keenan Cardell. Got to be perfect. Everything's perfect. Let's go. Get that attitude. Perfect. We're going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, but we got to strive for it. Coach Coughlin, he's rubbed off on me. You have to do it right all the time. Let's get better. Let's get better on three. One, two, three. Get, get better. better. What I'm telling them about Jimmy, they need to learn. Here's a guy that's so talented, chose the wrong path. There are consequences for your choices. You got to make the right choices. My big thing with, with their issue was that I just wanted you to be all right. I wasn't all right. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I, now that yeah, I know. Well, but I, I mean, I'm all right now. Yeah, but I, but I, wanted time, you to, I wanted you to be all right. I appreciate it. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we've always been brothers. You know, I yep. love you. I love you, you too. Know. I think he understands what he's done. You know, he's learned from his mistakes, and he's learned his lesson. All right. Thank you. Good to see you. Enjoy it, Appreciate boy. you, man. Boy. Love you. Love you, boy. Now, let's move on to the next part of your life. In July of 2014, the monitoring bracelet on Jimmy Smith's ankle was removed. Smith is a free man, but his recovery continues. I was thinking, like, I, I got to do something that's going to keep his mind off of things like that. I got to I gotta make things happen. I got to become more of a influence on him to, to stay away from things like that so he can just focus on me 
and try to relive his life through me and try to make me become the best I can be. Come on, Trey. Take the first drive down and score. Trey Smith on the keeper. He's in the end zone. He's in for the touchdown. Good job, boy. Good throw, boy. Good throw. You got that one on tape? Trey Smith accepted a football scholarship to Louisville. On the field and off it, Trey is making his family proud. As a parent, you want the best for your kids, but I gotta stay in recovery for myself because I've tried that, just to be in recovery for other people. You can't do it. Recovery is going well, but you know, you always gotta be fearful of relapsing. And I really believe God has a plan for me. I just gotta be one of those guys that's an inspiration. He's still a relatively young man, and he still could straighten his life out. And, and I'm hoping and praying that he does. When was the last time you guys spoke, do you remember? Long, long time ago. Long time ago. There have been many changes in Jacksonville since thunder and lightning left town. One of them is the creation of the Pride of the Jaguars, a ring of honor that features three former Jaguars, but not the team's top two all-time receivers. I think the Jaguar fans remember Jimmy Smith as being one of the greatest Jaguars to ever play the game. You ask me what he did on the field, of course he should be up there. I mean, he should have been up there before me. What up, y'all? Oh, we're all good. We're all together. It would be hard to have one without the other because they made each other great. I don't make those decisions. They'd be in my ring of honor. Hey, man, how you doing? Good to see you too, man. How are you, man? I'm doing, doing well. Doing really, really well, yes. How about the family? Man? Family's How's doing well. Good? Yeah. Kids are good? My mom told me to tell you hi. Tell her, tell her I said hi. I sure will. How's she doing? And your dad, right? You're doing good. Well, I would, I would pray that for Jimmy Smith, that the healing process takes place, that he becomes someone in society that can have a positive effect on others. Hey. Call me and give me your, uh, your cell phone number. Okay, yeah. I sure will. For Keenan, I hope the sky's the limit for, for Keenan, you know? See ya. See you, Hey. Good luck to you, all right? Thank you. He's... He's... He's a very special young man. Thunder and lightning, baby. Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell. Might as well gear up and go back out there and let's go. Wide receiver number 87, Keenan McCardell. Hard work beats talent when talent won't work. I had some talent, but I believe I was the guy that worked harder than the next guy. I wonder what kind of response I'm going to get. Don't know if everyone knows I'm here. Wide receiver number 82, Jimmy Smith. I've just got to be one of those guys who's turned their lives around and uh, who are in recovery and, and are doing well. Hey. Fight back the tears. I'm about to cry. Uh, I'm, I'm about to cry. I got kind of my eyes on the Every day is a is a new day for him. And he understands that. And I understand it with him. You just gotta. You know, get on your knees, pray to God, and just have people around you that love you. What would I do without them? <laughs> <laughs>